Hey guys, welcome back to Cards and Comics. So today I am on my way to Trificon in Connecticut. Um, so everyone else is at the National in Chicago. I couldn't go, but I have a three and a half hour drive to Connecticut and uh, looking forward to it, seeing some folks and picking up some good comics. I've got some to sell and uh, I'll give you an update when I get there. Later, bye. All right, we are here. I've um, never been here before and uh, you know, just parked. So we're gonna go in and see where we're at. But uh, some people in the parking lot, looks like, you know, it's uh, just uh, getting started. So I'll let you guys know how it goes when I get in the building. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards and Comics, and I hope you enjoyed that little video intro. I'm definitely not a videographer, so I just want to give you a little flavor of Trificon. Yeah, it's the first big comic book show I've been in since 2019, and um, it's the biggest one I've ever been to. I know that's kind of weird for someone who claims that they're a comic book guy, um, but in, I've never been to New York. I've never been to San Diego. I, I go to local comic book shows. 40 to 50 tables are normally where I go to and where I set up at. So this was big for me. It was really cool. Um, a lot of great books, a lot of good dealers. And, you know, um, before I get into the books, I want to give you a little update on kind of the state of the hobby and what was going on in the room. One is dealers weren't buying. I went there specifically to sell. I had about 12 to 15 books. I stopped at Very Gary's Comics because you know, I bought books from him and I've talked to him, you know, kind of ancillary, you know, through YouTube and, and different different means. And I thought maybe it'd be a good, you know, kind of, I could maybe video it or something, you know, for the channel. And he wasn't interested at all. Like, in fact, it pained him to even think about buying a book from me. Like, it, I could just see the look on his face was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to look at your books, dude. Um, and then um, he pointed me to another guy who wasn't interested either. Um, and I ended up selling to two people and in and, and both cases, um, you know, they were both like, you know, not really, you know, wanting to do it, but you know, I, 
I did come down the prices just because I had um, done so, you know, I had, <clears throat> I had uh, so much, so little in the books that I was able to make good profit and not have to get 80% margin or 80% of the value, you know. So there's that, you know. So the, the dealers weren't buying. The inventory in the room was very similar. So the dealers are loaded with inventory. I would say that there was over 20 giant size x men in the room. Tons of Fantastic Four, 48s and 49s. Uh, not as many 50s. Um, you know, um, a lot of Silver Surfer stuff, Mephisto, um, you know, Silver Surfer 3, Silver Surfer 4, Silver Surfer 1. Um, a lot of Loki stuff. So, you know, people are just following the, the, the trends. Um, um, I saw a lot of, you know, um, you know um, Amazing Spider-Man, like 316. Uh, a lot of 300s, just tons and tons of 300s. So, um, and my conclusion really was that um, the the Silver Age keys, a lot of them just aren't really rare. Um, now, as far as rare books, you know, I didn't see like um, you know Strangers in Paradise one. I didn't see like uh, Comic O Presents. And if it was there, it was gone the first day. If it was there, I did see some Grinda ones. Um, so there's some of the rare books, but there was like one bone one that Gary had that I asked about and it was 5,000, which is a great price. I wish I had the money, I would have bought it. Um, and then on the Golden Age side, the best Golden Age book, I saw I saw The Mask, an L.B. Cole book. Um, and then, which, you know, was a, a great book. Then I saw um, a um, Marvel a Mystery Comics 3, which is first Red Hood, which is just one of the, or sorry, Red Hood, Red Skull. Great, great copy, 4.0. Uh, the guy had a reasonable price on it. And, you know, like that book was amazing. So that was probably my favorite uh, comic book I, I saw in the whole show. Um, but, yeah, there is rare books out there. Um, you know, I bought a couple of books I thought were rare, um, and I'll show them to you. But, you know, there is some what I would consider um, need for um, people to kind of look at what's really rare and what's easy to get. And, Prices sometimes don't reflect it, so you know it might, there might be a little correction coming on what's truly rare, and those books may just skyrocket. You know, Bone One, um, some of these really rare '80s books could just get out of sight again. You know, uh, like Albedo, um, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles One. There could be more of those. Uh, Strangers in Paradise is one. If it ever gets turned into some kind of property, that's a great story. Could turn into something big. So. Um, so I'll start with, I was looking for Golden Age first, and so I was selling, um, oh, what I was selling, you know, I brought, like, uh, X-Men 94, uh, Invincible, which was one of the things that was hot in the room was Invincible, uh, New Avengers, sorry, Young Avengers, um, I brought it as well, and so those two books were hot, um, but my X-Men 94, no one cared about, no one cared about my Amazing Spider-Man 300, so... It just shows, you know, the stuff that people had a lot of inventory on, they, they, they didn't really want to look at them. And, you know, even though they're good books and high dollar books, they just, you know, weren't even interested in, in making an offer. Um, so, you know, I'll start with the raw books. But the raw books I picked up, I mean, I was very excited about my raw books. I mean, typically in these kind of shows, you know, I, I especially on the Golden Age line, I will definitely stay with graded because I've been burnt so much on Golden Age raw that I just kind of refuse to do it. But on the newer stuff, it's less risky, and I feel like I got some really good deals on the raw stuff. So the first two books here, and if you looked at my last uh, video update or my last uh, uh, my last um, um, uh, video, I talked a lot about Sandman Six. So here's Sandman Six, copy one, and Sandman Six, copy two. So these books are um, really. Um, I think they're going up in value. They're, they're, they're one of these like hidden keys, not because there's a first appearance, but because the story is so important, uh, not only to, to Sandman, but just to comics in general that a story like this got told in modern day. Um, and, and if you want to go into my video, I'll put a link to it here on why this story is so important and why uh, you know a lot of folks feel like it's the, you know, like the you know most horrific or, you know, most horror content related comic book ever made um at least in the modern era you know this that that story is so is very very horrific and and if you read it it's very tough and i listened to the audible version of it and it's just hard to even listen to it's so bad and i can't imagine when they turn it into a netflix 
show um, how that's going to look. But it, and I think that's why it's it's kind of gained some value, and some horror fans I think are are picking up on it. And you can see the graded version of this book sells pretty well uh, compared to other non keys around the first ten books. Uh, the other non keys don't sell as high as this one, so uh, folks are picking up that it's it's a little special. Next up is. Um, Sandman number 10, and this book is important because it is the first Corinthian, and the Corinthian is is kind of the first villain you meet, you know, I guess second or third. I mean, there's other characters that are kind of bad, like, you know, but the Corinthian isn't really, you know, like evil or, or a villain. He just is a failed creation, and so, like, you know, he kind of has that, um, you know, a very... Um, you know, mis unmistakable um, presence in the series, and he definitely is some character that people really want to see on 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 TV. So I think this book will always have legs. Now the next two are obviously you know what I came for to find. First up is you know Sandman number eight, um, first copy, and then Sandman number eight, second copy. So I got two copies of Sandman eight. And, you know, I'm going to get them graded. Um, no, I'm not just going to tell you because I've got multiple copies of one graded. And um, and I actually just picked up, oh, well, I just, I just uh, found a collection of comic books I bought uh, a year ago during lockdown from, from a, a friend who had a bunch of Vertigo books from the 90s, um, 80s and 90s that he or she collected. And there's a lot of salmon in there, and uh, um, so I'm going to go through that collection pretty soon uh, on, on on live because I don't know what's in there. I just saw what was in there. I saw there were salmon books, um, and you know I, I'm going to end up you know I end up just buying it, and um, you know um, let me go through and see if there's any keys in there. Um, I remember going through that. I don't think there's an eight, but there was a one. I remember there was a one. So, um, you know, I bought multiple collections with Sandman books where the one and eight were always missing, but I think this one did have a one, but I'll have to go back and look and but I'll do that on, you know, I'm going to do it as a video just to kind of go through a uh, collection I bought, but I don't have any eights. There was no eights for sale on Saturday graded. Um, and I bought two of the three eights I saw, uh, sitting on the walls. Um, so I'm excited. I think they're really going to be undervalued, but who knows? I mean, but it's a great character. So no matter what, the character is awesome. Now, next up is the first appearance of death outside of Sandman universe. So this is kind of in the modern DC universe. So this is uh, Captain Adam 42, uh, came out in 1990. And so she's in a bunch of panels and she's guiding someone through, uh, you know, like the, the river of death, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's a good story and it's just, awesome to see her in a different light next up is a book that i actually went looking for specifically that i didn't think i was going to find because it's a it's in a series that no one really collects in, or the years uh so this is uh, action 894 it's got probably one of the most iconic so far death covers um you know and i am going to do a video on on speculating on on the character death um, and there are other books out there that have some good death content, especially covers. So whereas Action 40, or sorry, whereas Captain Adam 42 really didn't have, you know, obviously have death on the cover. This is a very iconic, um, you know, um, cover from Finch. And, you know, um, I, I feel like, you know, it, <laughs> it, it's really, um, you know, um, one of those, few times where you know you, you have like this kind of off brand action comics you know not related to the, the Sandman series that actually has the most iconic or, or nicest looking death cover so it's kind of odd um, so you know I think that um, you know is all the Sandman or Sandman related books I picked up but I was very excited um, when I got this one because I went to about 20 dealers and all of them but two knew what the book was because when I had asked like Action 894 they'd say what what's important about that book and I'd be like oh Death's on the cover and they're like oh yeah, I kind of remember that one and it'll be in my my pile if I have it and, and no one had it in their pile 
uh, or their boxes, right? And so one guy did have it, and as soon as I said, hey, actually, I need like, yep, I got one right here, and he pulled it right out, and I bought it. And that's a copy you see here. The other guy that, yeah, he knew what it was, and he said, I wish I had more copies because, you know, these were like dollar books a couple years ago. And I'm like, yeah, it, it definitely was, and I wish I'd have bought them too. Uh, moving outside of the whole uh, Sandman universe is the convention exclusive. This is Moon Knight... Uh, one, this is the Ken Lashley uh, version, I believe. Um, and um, the cool thing about this, I think it's the werewolf, it's like a, like a homage to Werewolf by Night. Um, you know, where um, they've kind of reversed the cover, you know, and it, it's really cool. I, I really, really dig it. Um, and there is the Virgin variant out there. And again, you know, this is like kind of like with dealers, you know, like, uh, again, I went to Barry Gary Comics, you know, and we, we talked you know, a few times in the show. Uh, he was really busy, but I went to him after the show was dying down and I was getting ready to leave. And I asked him because the virgins were sold out. And so I asked him, Hey, can you, do you have any virgin variants? I know you picked up a bunch. He's like, yeah, I do, but I can't break them up. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I got them in sets. I'm going to sell them as, you know, the virgin of the, the, the regular. I'm like, okay. So I, I got the regular. I just was looking at the virgin. And he's like, well, I can't break him up. So, you know, I can sell you the set. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. You know, no, you know, you know, no problem, man. You know, but it's just kind of like, <laughs> I was going to ask him, could he pick me up, you know? You know, I give you the money, him pick me a version, version, you know, today. But then I'm like, he's too busy. To, I don't want to ask someone to, to do that because I feel like, you know, it's putting a lot of, uh, you know, like, you know, like giving someone a task to do when they're really busy. But, you know, it just shows, like, you know, like, and these things are already on sale on eBay, I think, for 35 bucks, 40 bucks for the regular, and 80 bucks for the Virgin, and he was selling the sets for 100 so they're pretty, that's a, actually a pretty good price, so if you want them, I definitely recommend buying from him, because he seems lower than everyone else, but it just shows, too, like, you know, people, you know, these, this costs $15 at the show, so, yeah, uh, you know, people are doubling, their, doubling up or tripling up their money, so, yeah. It is what it is. I just thought it was a cool cover, and I wanted to have something from the show to take back with me, so um, that, to remember by. Next up was a book. I sold one copy, and I bought a copy. So this is Young Avengers number one. Uh, super hot book. People are really, you know, uh, specking on a lot of these first appearances here. So a lot of people know about it. Next up, I picked uh, Amazing Fantasy number ten, the first Amadeus Cho. I don't have this book. So I really wanted just to have it. Um, and so next up are some books um, that I just saw there and they've been really, really going up in value. And it's from the first, or I don't say it's first, but it's from the um, you know early 2000s, I believe, yeah. Or 2011 um, Zatanna series. So here's 15. So here's the, I call it the black cover. So there's 15 and then here's 16. So I got them both. Um, from one dealer and they both are awesome books and really glad to have both 15 and 16 and so they're really really cool books um, and I you know I <laughs> it's one of those huge covers I just never ever had I don't know why um, next up is Planet Comics but not the Golden Age version this is the Dave Stevens version and I picked it up because it was just there <laughs> and I've always loved this book you know, this book and the Adam Hughes Dirty Pair book are like kind of my uh, cheesecake, like space-related books. I just always want to find. If I see them, I, I got to buy them. And so this one was just awesome. You know, like, and it's a really nice shape. It's got two little spine tags, but you know, it's going to grade pretty well. It's just fun to see some books like this out in the wild. You don't see them very often, and it, they're just, it's just cool. Um, you know, to see a book like this and. I picked it up, and so it's my second copy. So what I was thinking is that, you know, uh, my channel is over a year old now. I didn't do a one-year special. I just didn't really have the content or really know what to do for a one-year anniversary. But I've never get, done any giveaway, so I'm, I've got to figure out some way. But I think I'm going to give away my uh, Extra Planet Comics one, which is a cool book. And uh, I just got to figure out how I'm going to do it, but I think I'm going to do a giveaway. Now, next up is, like, two really unique items. Um, and I don't know like how rare they are, but I think they're rare. I just don't know like how rare uh, rare is on especially the first one. 
So the first one is, is just real unique. It is the three pack of DC Comics with um, Batman 423, the really cool McFarlane cover. And you can see on the back is 425, so I'm assuming 424 is in the middle. But it's in the original wrapper. Um, you can see, you know, obviously when you put the cellophane, it kind of pulls up a little bit on the corner, so it won't be a 9 8. But I thought it was just cool to find this at a show, um, still in the wrapper, still in, you know, like good shape, um, no yellowing. It's just, oh, I, I think it's cool. Like, you know, it's not going to be high grade, but it's a really cool version of this book to have. And I already have this in some other versions, so I have some other copies of it. So, I just thought it was cool and uh, it's rare you don't see it very often and I just think it's kind of fun and uh, that's what comics are about having some fun and last up is a book that I've been looking for now I have the caliber presents version of this which is at you know, the first appearance but this is the cover that everyone wants this is the book I think people think of when they think of the crow um, so I got it I, I paid okay for it it's not a high grade Meaning that it's not, you know, it's got spine breaks here and here, so it's not going to be, you know, uh, a 98. You know, I think it's going to be 8 plus uh, when it gets pressed, and that's fine. That, that's good enough for me. I don't need a 98 in this book, it's so expensive. I just want to have a copy. I do think that they're going to do something with this character in the future at some point, and, and the design of the character is so awesome that it'll, again, capture some imagination. And they're rare. They're not very easy to find. So, um, it's a, to me, it's a little risk. And I'd rather buy this book than pay the same price for something like, um, you know, like what was going on in the show. Um, uh, Blue Adam 1 or something like that. You know, I know a lot of people were specking on it, but, you know, The Crow versus The Adventures of Blue Adam or whatever know what that book is. You know, Blue, I'm sorry, Blue Marble, right? Or Adam the Blue Marble. Um, you know, I don't know much about that book, but I do know that, like, you know, um, it, you know, like, it's the same price. So, like, I'd rather get this book now, and maybe I get that book later when I learn more about it. But, you know, this book to me is a cooler um, book for me because of the time period I'm from. And, you know, and, but it's just kind of like how I make decisions. It's like, okay, well, I've heard good things about that book, but I, I'm going to stick with the one I know. All right, so next up is... Um, the last part of it is the, is the graded books I picked up. So the, obviously it'll be harder to show off because it's harder to show graded books, you know, in a in the video of the glare and stuff. But I'll start here with the cheapest of the books. And so this is a 9.8. So this is True Love Comics from Eclipse. And this is a, a great Dave Stevens book. Um, so it's just like, you know, obviously uh, a romance really to co uh, cover from the, uh, kind of the golden age, you know, and even I think there's some silver age romance books. So it's just a, a send up of that. And I really, um, you know, just I think it's cool and it wasn't expensive and, and it was great to find a 9.8, uh, you know, 80s Dave Stevens book that didn't break the bank. So that's uh, first one. Next up. Um, is you know my first Schomburg I picked up at the show so this is a 6.0 uh, this is Black Terror number 18 and I like it just because you know it's kind of got some fun stuff here with him flying um, and it's not a break the bank book so it's just fun to find you know a Schomburg book I don't have and I, I always enjoy the character design of Black Terror and um Next is an LB Cole book, um, kind of, yeah. Um, now this is obviously a little bit more of a romance book. Um, very interesting cover because I mean LB Cole is known for more of his horror, and you know uh, those kind of books. And this uh, is a, it's like a romance book, but you know it's got some fine, you know, some very nice art and shows that he's just not a, he's just not a weird. Um, you know, like uh, monsters and and, and and like oranges and red and green colors and stuff like that. He's, he was a, a great artist who could do multiple styles. And I like his little stylized LB Cole right here on the uh, band um, box there. And um, this is a cover that has a lot of people who love it because this is 
a great artist doing a romance cover with a you know like a kind of some cheesecake on the front um always always you know um worth a little bit more when you got all that going for you and uh, that's a cool book not a big bank breaker but a, a fun book and then last but not least this is the big book of the show uh marvel comics number 35 and so i sold a big book to get this book you can't uh, you know, get books like this and let you, you know, pay for them. So it took, you know, selling a few um, pretty nice books in my collection to to afford it. But, you know, this is, and I haven't had a War uh, Schomburg Marvel Comics book in a while, uh, for over two years. They're so hard to get and they're so expensive. And, you know, I just don't want point fives and ones in my collection. And, and I have actually gotten a few of those lately, not on War books, but on some other books. But you know, World War II uh, strong covers like this are just harder and harder to get. And this one is a nice copy. You've got just tons of stuff going on. So it's like classic Schomburg style this time period. Classic war with just tons of stuff going on. Um, and um, and it's a good grade, 6.0. So Marvel Comics number 35. And that was the big book that was really after I got this book, I was like, man, I've had a great show, whatever I do now. And so, you know, how it rolled was, I got this book, the Black Terror book, the L.B. Cole book, and the Dave Stevens book, like, first. Like, those were the first things I picked up. I sold comics, picked up those books. And I spent the rest of the show walking around looking for Sandman books and, and just kind of very low, like, you know, like, uh, I wasn't stressing more because I didn't, I found the book I wanted. And then it was just fun at that because I was just searching for cool Sandman covers and, and cool Sandman keys. And if they were too priced high, I could walk away and not feel like I'm going to have a bad show. So it made the show a lot more fun. And then I found every kind of Sandman book I was looking for, which is also amazing. So again, that's why I love the show. Um, the Tahegan Sun was a great place. I had sushi afterwards. Uh, you know, you can't beat that. So, you know, it was a great day. I was glad I went. Uh, I got home like at around 11:30 at night, so um, you know it, it was definitely a late night. But hey, um, I would do it again, you know. And hopefully the next show I go to is just as cool. I'm thinking about a few, and uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, first big comic book show in forever, and it was a great one. Um, everyone I met there, you know, was great, and uh, hope to see you guys again. I ran into uh, Pressable Defects as well. Um, shout. Um, Shout him out, and uh, he's uh, those guys are awesome. Um, and you know, Jay was great. So you know, they, they they were willing to talk to you. You know, and that's what I like about the community is that you know these you know, YouTube guys will talk to you and they'll they'll give you some time. Um, but they're busy, you know, and, and and you know, and dealers are busy, and you can't just sit there and talk to them forever, uh, or you know, chat them up. Uh, you know, it's a, they're running a business, so I understand. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you. Uh, pretty soon. Bye.